it took a little bit, but Uncle Clifford got the whole picture of what's going on around him, and it's getting ready to be a whole problem. <laughs> Hey guys, thanks so much for clicking on the video. This is my review for season one, episode three, called Higher Ground of Pea Valley. Like I said, throughout this episode, there was a lot of stuff that was actually going on. We were getting um, a, another, you know, picture of our actual main characters and more about their lives. And in the midst of all of that, Uncle Clifford got down to the bottom of what's actually going on. And I said, oh, he's going to start the show and out for real now. So this is good, getting ready to be real good. Let's start here. Mercedes, you know that Mercedes is bad. She really is. Mercedes and Mississippi are really, they're the front runners in the club. And if Mississippi could get herself together, Mississippi would be unstoppable. Because by far, Mississippi, I think, is the baddest thing in there. I think she's sharp um, as far as her dancing skills and the things that we see her do on the pole is just, she she's amazing. She really is a very, very pretty girl and just amazing at what she does. But her life is such a mess. Mercedes is more, I give her that she's more together and that's why she is Clifford's bottom bitch because she has that hard exterior she really ain't that hard, but her persona is that hard exterior. She could take it. You know, she she's a little rough around the edge, even when Clifford isn't. But them two, them two are something else. And then we really got to know Gidget more in this. Gidget is the one, the white girl, who actually rolled with them. And Gidget's pretty sharp, too. Um, this episode focused in a lot on tricks versus customers versus boyfriends and can one person be all three if you're lucky they can if you're foolish it can all collide anyway we start off mercedes is with this guy who he's a nice brown skin looking dude and he's he's a coach for memphis he's, he's some type of basketball coach for memphis and he's dan she's dancing for him and all her good old sharpness. And uh, he's telling her, you know, you should come back to Memphis with me. Let me put you up in a penthouse and take care of you, blah, 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 blah. Well, she's asking him, but what about your wife? See, even in the midst of working, she ain't wanting to, don't play in my face. Don't play in my face. And she let him know, you know, I'm going to shake my ass. I'm going to do what I do. I'm going to get this money. You can't really afford me, bruh. It, it just is what it is. And she just shot it at him straight out. And the way the scene was filmed, it was like it was only them two. They were showing you just how bad she is at what she does. Because as the scene finished and unfolded, you saw they were literally in the middle of the club. And she was lap dancing him in the middle of the club. But she had his attention so laser focused on her. It was like there was nobody else in the club but him and her. I said, come on through, Miss Mercedes. And she did. She let him down easy, took her coin, and went on about her business. So I don't know why we focused in on him, per se. I don't know if we're going to see more about him at another time. Or maybe they were just using that as a way to show us how, how fiercely she works that mind game. I don't know. But we'll see. I, I will remember the coach. Because they went into to a whole lot about him for that little small part. So I'll be keeping that, keeping my eye out for him. Anyway, then we actually see Gidget and we see Autumn. That's like the next day at the wig store. And they were talking about the importance of the girls having their, basically their personas. So Autumn gets this blonde wig. Now, Listen to this now. I'm not going real deep with y'all with this. But she got this blonde wig. It was a long, straight blonde wig. And actually, I thought it looked nice on her. It did look nice. Um, Because you know who Uncle Clifford was reading her down about her shake and go hairdo. 
like, what is this girl? These crimps let out and it just, yeah, like, girl, what is really going on with this half corporate slut hairdo, honey? So she gets her blonde wig. Now, when she puts this blonde wig on, now we're going down to Pea Valley and she already has a bit of an exotic look about her. She is very fair skinned. So she is coming across as not as so much as a white girl, but a very exotic white girl. A white girl with black stuff, basically. Kind of. What, it, you know, it, it, it was like a piece of Creole skin with something extra added. So it, this whole little piece about colorism, I noticed that it had worked in. I noticed that she never did bad in the club. They paid attention to her anyway. But did you all notice how much more the guys were like fawning over her and like she was something special at this point now because she had get this old long blonde hair. I said, okay, so we're touching on to the little colorism thing, a little taste. I said, okay, I caught it. I don't know if y'all did. You know, sometime when the colorism thing, you know, and they're showing you that because it does exist in the entertainment world, period. It does. That's what it, with strippers, it happens with drag queens. You know, I could tell you colorism stories from my point of view, even in the drag world, honey, there, it, it exists. But we ain't going to get deep into it and get to fight with each other and all that. We're not ready to do that. But that they were tapping into that. They were definitely making a point of that. But yeah, it was like she she was like the it girl. And now we're noticing that she's getting more drunk too. She's doing a lot more drinking too. Having flashbacks still. Um, there was a flashback, something that had to do with a baby and a car, and 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 then it looked like somebody shot somebody and she had blood on her and and you know the the pictures and her phone are of like a little girl that's like school. She looks school age, like almost like preschool or kindergarten, maybe even first grade. This was like a little baby. So I don't know. She got a whole lot going on in her psyche. And I'm noticing that she's drinking more and more to the point where even the bartenders are picking up on it. And the girl, you know, the girl that plays Quita from uh, Have and Have Not, she was like, bitch, you need to slow down. She gave her a drink. She said, give me a shot. She's like, girl, that was water. She gonna say, yeah, slow down, bitch. So, a lot of little things going on with Miss Autumn. She's still trying to get this here ID back. Her and Uncle Clifford run into this little thing, and she's like, so did you get any tea? She's telling him, Andre, you know, I called him, and he ain't called me back, this, that, thing, and the other, which is a lie. Andre ain't been calling and calling and calling and calling her. And um, he told her, let me tell you something, bitch. No T, no ID, bitch. And so she actually needs the ID to be able to get this money. Remember, she got that $9,000 transfer, that wire transfer that's sitting, and she needs that ID to get it. So he told her, "You need. I need some T. No T, no ID. Then we go to the scene. We see Andre and the mayor. And the mayor is basically, he real full of himself. He real full of himself. And he's telling Andre, you know, this this is a secret. Keep your voice down. The whole thing about this casino has to stay a secret because we're in the Bible Belt. And these Bible thumpers will blow these plans straight to hell if they find out about a casino coming down here. They're not here for it. They're not for it. Um, Andre was saying to him, you know, he said something about things being named after him and different things like that. And he's like, wait a minute. That ain't no good look. You think that's a good look to study? He's like, are you judging me? You judging me? And Andre's like, <clears throat> whatever. No, I ain't even trying to go into all that with you. He said, they don't call this the dirty self for nothing. There's a certain way that, you know, things are done. And Andre's like, okay. Now, I, I got the feeling that he and Andre were more connected. They're like bed buddies. And I don't mean in a sexual way. I mean like Andre is not a bad person, but he's linked to some bad people. If the the 
you know, if the ends could justify the means, then there, there you have Andre. Okay. Andre is thinking, we found out in this episode, Andre's actually from there. This is his, where he grew up, which is weird because nobody seems to know him or remember him. And they, you know, they're real big, especially in Louisiana, like New Orleans and places like that. They're real big on lineage. That's, that's part of their conversation. If you ever talk to anybody from uh, NOLA or just Louisiana, period, they, they have this way about them where they love to pull pedigree. They love to pull pedigree. They, their conversation when they meet you is who you belong to. Where you come from? What is your pedigree? And that kind of thing. So the fact that nobody seems to know Andre or remember Andre is really strange to me. But anyway, we'll talk more about that as we go forward. So anyway, he leaves the mayor and he goes on about his business. Just remember that, okay? Um, like I said, I think they they know more. There, there's more of a connection than just he's the mayor, okay? So that's that. He wants things named after him. Speaking of, man, let's skip that right now. Okay, Autumn and Andre. She ends up contacting Andre. Then we kind of get this whole little, there was a little scene with Big Al and Diamond outside the club at the end of the night. And um, Autumn came out there and she asked for a cigarette. And they really, Diamond don't, don't see it for her, I don't think, very much. And Big Al just is like, hmm. Because something's off about her. Something's off about her. But you know, Diamond got a little thing for Mississippi. But anyway, that's another thing altogether. So she ends up getting in touch with Andre. She meets Andre at this little uh, rest. They got out to the little restaurant. Uh, little eating hole. And they're talking. And sees this older man. The older man thought they were a couple. And they make it, you know, no, we're not a couple, blah, 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 blah. She ends up noticing the wedding ring on Andre's hand. They end up talking about that. They get all that out there. So we find that all out. Andre definitely has a family in Atlanta. Um, and now Autumn knows about it and all of that. Nor does she. don't really care because she just sat up there and played with her box. And he just shook his stick all last week. And, you know, last week. Or it might have been a day or so ago for them, but it's a week for us. But all of that that went on, so they've already crossed the line with that wedding ring. That wedding ring don't mean a thing. Child, it don't mean a thing because Autumn's not wearing the ring, honey. Don't make no, 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 make no sense. Don't make no difference. So they already crossed the line. So in the midst of that, then the girls come in. You got Gidget, Mississippi, and Mercedes. And they're just loud and ghetto, and they come over, and they charge their bill to Andre. Andre's like, okay, that's my exit. He gets up and he leaves. He goes and pays their bill and he goes out. Autumn don't like them bitches all like that. So she ended up, not long after that, she get up and she leave. And they were teasing her, saying, oh, girl, so now you date in one of your regulars? So here we go with the whole thing with the regulars, customers, tricks. You know, she's like, no, 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 whatever, girl. So they teased her a little bit. She's going about her business. So now we flip over to something very interesting. Clifford and Corbin. Clifford goes, Uncle Clifford goes to see Corbin. Child, Uncle Clifford, child, you know his his brand of drag, honey. I, I just call it gender fuck, honey. Is what it is. He got some of this and some of that. Some jeans, shorts. Plus, he got a, a you know, the the little short version of the hoop skirt on. And just, I'm like, child, you, Uncle Clifford is something else, honey. He is. He's just, he's something else. He's all the way dressed up like a debutante boy. <laughs> it's a debutante dude, honey. Just. Very dude looks like a lady, honey. Heels and all nine yards in the middle of the cotton field. She's got an umbrella and all. I said, girl, you better do it, honey. You better do it. She, it's what I call gender fuck. You know what I mean? She just, I do what I want, how I want, when I want, and why ever I want. I ain't got to be in no full face of makeup if I want. I can have on half girl clothes, half boy clothes. She just, it's a gender fuck. So, I love it. I just cracked up. I was like, look at her, honey. She went out there and seen Corbin, honey. Got to telling him 
um, and she knew a little something, and she was getting more information. He comes on out with her about the whole thing about the casino and all of this, and that there's like a $10 million situation. Like, that's what, like, the grounds are worth, like, $10 million. It's going to be a lot of money. And she got it in her mind because Corbin never said that. But she said it. That, uh, oh, yeah, there's going to be a, a casino across from the Pussy Valley. What? Oh, mothers get ready to get paid. And, all, and she's, like, all excited. Now, well, she ain't really, that, that ain't really what's going to go on. That ain't really what's going on. But anyway, just hold on to that little piece, okay? So, Corbin's going through that, and then she's like, I could keep a secret, and I just got to hold on and all this, and she knows she got these money problems, but she's working on it, and she, you know, don't give up. Go hold out, because now it's almost payday. is getting ready to come. So, she told Corbin, I know how to keep a secret. I always did keep a secret. I've always kept your secrets, haven't I? And, you know, that's him and his whole S&M situation and all of that. You know, that he likes to have a little fun playing the dark arts and all of that. But she went deeper and told him, honey, you know I know, honey. The bastard son of the maid, honey. With the, the plantation owner as the daddy. Yeah, I know your lineage, honey. From the time to when we were kids, honey, I knew about it. And I've kept your secret all this time. I know how to keep a secret. I said, oh, here we go, honey. So, like I said, they deal in pedigree and lineage, honey. So, that was that. So, anyway, let's go over here to Miss Mercedes and her girls. She had a little running with her girls. She's mad as hell at these girls. They done did a video. They up there popping it and dropping it and locking it, twerking and carrying on. Mercedes was pissed. Piss, piss, piss. So she ended up telling them, you know, this ain't cute. This is not cute. There's one little girl. Her name is Terika. Terika is the only one bold enough to give a little lip to Miss Mercedes. And she said, you know, we're just having fun. We shaking our ass. You shake yours. Baby, and she came back. She said, what you said? Baby, when I told you she cussed them out. She cussed these girls out, let them have it, told them, I get paid for shaking my ass. You little ones were on there shaking your ass for free. Where the fuck they do that at? Don't get me, you got me fucked up. I was like, oh. So that was that. Now, I said, now remember that. That Miss Terrica, honey, with her bold little mouth. So then Mercedes has this little run-in with her mother. And she tells her mother, I need my money next week. So, need that money for what? Now, first of all, don't ever question me about what I need my goddamn money for. Girl, are you okay? But she did that. She told her, I got my gym, mama. I got my gym, this, that, and the other. And her mother, she was proud of her, but there's something going on with this money. I don't believe she has access to that money. Either that or it's been spent or it's been thrown as... Um, escrow, part of it or all of it has been put into escrow for this loan for the church or some, some kind of way her mother ain't got access for this money back to get this money back 20 G's back I said mm -mm, something ain't right and she hugged her mother and that caught her all off guard and everything I said uh, something going on with that money something is going on with that money anyway let's flip on over to like the next day the girl, and listen, the baby, Mississippi's baby is all, she's an import, the baby's an employee down to the club. The, that baby is always at the club for rehearsals, work, and everything else. You always hear this baby crying. The baby is always at the club, honey. The baby works there. Anyway, they were down there <clears throat> rehearsing. This fierce old number that they end up doing, it was Gidget, Mercedes, and Mississippi. It's a number, the choreography is everything everything they are doing all these tricks and standing on top of each other and then it has a whole lesbianism thing going on with it and it, i said oh these bitches is ready to make all the money all the money but they, they they bad individually and then together they are just amazing i said yeah they great clean up so they were practicing and then they had mississippi had to stop and here we see she has her wrist is sprained 
So she has another run-in with Dam, and Dam does this little home remedy thing with some pepper, black pepper, the end of a knife, and some ice, and something else, trying to fix up her arm. I said, oh, okay. We found out that he was, I think he was in Iraq. So I was like, this is why he's so dangerous, honey. He knows how to survive, and he knows how to make you not survive. Anyway, I was like, come on. Come on, Benny. Much better. I like him much better over here than I do when he's Benny on the have and have not. So over here, he's sexy. When he's Benny, he's aggravating. But anyway, so they got that little thing. You know, there's this whole animal magnetism thing between them. I'll be glad when he, when Diamond just go ahead and kill Mississippi's boyfriend and go on to take her and his baby and go on. But anyway, that's a whole nother story. Um, so that night they do their little dance and everything kills it. Autumn then got so drunk, so drunk. She didn't got all caught up in the thing with them and they doing their thing on the pole. She going to go get up on the pole. Now Clifford, Clifford is over there giving you every bit of, I, I told y'all, he gives you that energy of like big Frida child and the people live for Clifford so he was over there giving yes my bitches and he was pumping them up big old cheerleader on the side and they was getting it baby they was getting the money all this money and Autumn jumps up there and he's like oh my new bitch then jumped up here Autumn get up there she all drunk she falling down on the floor the people was laughing at her a little bit she tried to go up the pole and do a little something so Mercedes got to save the show she ran up there and she's like working with her Autumn then fell off the pole and all this. Mercedes go leap on top of her, make it into a whole lesbian moment, honey, and plays it off. Afterwards, they go backstage. She ran up on her, and when I tell you, Mercedes cursed her ass out. Told her, don't you ever get your drunk ass up on my pole again, bitch. So you don't know what you're doing. And, you know, the way when she fell and stuff, she could have hurt herself. And or Mercedes, you know what I mean? She cussed her out, told her, stay your drunk ass off my pole. She'll say, well, why do you even care? And she's like, I don't care. She said, you need to go home and get yourself together. She do care. That's why I said she has that hard exterior, but she ain't really hard all like that. Child. She looking for love in all the wrong places, and the wrong place is her mother, because her mother is a whole goddamn mess. The one that should love on her, that mother is something else. And I'm going to get to that in a minute. Let's talk about little murder. Lil Murda went and seen the little DJ. The little DJ is still in school. It looks like, like high school, like maybe he's a senior in high school. And he gave him some music advice and different things like that. Little talented kid. And we thought he knows the DJ's mother. Because he's like, you come over for dinner because you know my mother loves you. He said, you and your mother love me. This, that, and the other. So I said, wait a minute, hold on now. Because see, Lil Murder's giving me trade, 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 honey. And I'm like, tell me he ain't messing with the little boy's mother, honey. Whatever. So him and the little boy, you could tell they knew each other. Things was cool. He went on to the house and all that. They was hanging all out. Then he ended up bringing him to work. He was late. And um, Clifford was out there fussing and fussing and fussing. He's like, when your mother get this, he, he was a different car than what little little murder usually be driving. He seen him and he, he it showed y'all the whole trade thing and how the queens will look out for the trade, honey. Because there were some folks out and he was like, don't get out the car. Don't get out the car. You know, because he didn't need nobody seeing him dealing with Clifford because he thought that it was the mother, but it wasn't the mother. It was actually Lil' Murder. So as the mother, Lil' Murder was driving the mother's car, I said, oh, and brought the little boy to work. I messed so his mother know he worked at the club too. So I said, it's the best. But he didn't come in the, in the club. I said, yeah, they got a whole thing going these two. So very interesting. We'll be keeping our eye on that. But I need to know what that correlation with that mother and a little DJ. I said, what is that? I said, that could get very sticky and very messy. Y'all know I love a love triangle, honey. So come on. Anyway, moving on. So Autumn and Andre. They end up going and they go out to up to the mountains <clears throat> that the older man 
<clears throat> in the restaurant and told them about, and they're out there having a good old time. Then they decide that they're going to bump, bump ugly, so they're going to get down. They go back to his hotel. I said, Andre, you are so stupid. They go back to the hotel. She get him all worked up. She's like, you got a condom? me like, no. She sends him out to get one. Then, stupid, stupid, stupid. He tell, She tells him, let me into the computer so I can keep my this thing going, honey. Keep this engine running. I said, that's dumb. He opened the computer first so she could watch porn or whatever. Maybe she just searched all through the computer. Found the files. You know, on everything about P Valley and the casino and all of this. But she also found that folder that he has that has all those pictures that he's been taking of her, which is really weird and creepy, okay? So when he finally gets back, and then child, there was this queen that was working at the um the front desk, child. She was given um she gave them very much of Babel Belt Queen, honey. And he was given do you have, uh, you got condoms? And, she, and the child was like, no, we ain't got no condoms. And she seen the, the uh, ring on his finger and was saying, uh -huh, God bless you, uh, brother. I said, mind your business, bitch. That's why people always get in trouble. Shut up, mind your business. Hold on. But he went and got the condom. He come back. She done left the computer open with the porn plan and the picture of her where he could see she found that folder. And she didn't disappear. She didn't went on off about her business. So she's ignoring calls from him. He's like, oh, shoot, I done weirded her out. Yeah, you did. Anyway, so let's go over to the church. Miss Patrice, honey, you know, Mercedes's mother. She over there with the pastors and the deacons, honey, because the pastor's getting ready to go out of town to do something. And, you know, she got it in her that she swear that she wants to preach at all of this, okay? So he's like, see, you got to put somebody in charge to preach while he's gone in his absence. Cracked her face. Cracked her face, told her it was going to be this other uh, pastor that was going to be doing it. She was pissed. And she was like, he ain't bringing nobody in. He ain't holding no sermon, holding nobody's attention on it. He basically gave her very much of what you already know about the Bible, Belt, honey. Women in the pulpit. No, 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 honey. And a lot of churches and a lot of religions believe that the women ain't got no business in the pulpit. This, that thing, and the other. And he just cracked her face because he made her believe that he was going to put her up there. But mm -mm, he got no intentions. He's just using her. He's cute. He's a cute little man. But he's using Patrice, honey. She was pissed. Pissed, pissed, pissed. So that whole thing happened. Then we're at the club. Let's go to the club. Mercedes doing her thing. And then she's back in the back. And the girls is going off laughing about this. These young bitches, look at them. They on their twerking again. And who she see? Terrica. And it's at this house. I said, well, how she? She left. She, like, left the club. Had this real cute jumpsuit on. I said, that Mercedes is built bad, honey. She is. She built bad. I said, come on here with this cat suit on, this little track cat suit. It was sharp. So she rolled up to the party, baby. You see these little young boys. They was like, who is this bad bitch? Here's another bad bitch. And the one little boy looked. He's like, no, nah, that don't look like no regular bad bitch. That look like somebody getting ready to get their ass whooped. And that was right. She come up in there, baby. Terrica going to try to slide out. She's like, this is your house. How you going to slide out, baby? She, Mercedes in the party told y'all, y'all ain't got to get home, but y'all got to get the hell up out of here. Here we find out this is Terrica's uh what turns out to be her foster mother's house. She fussed at Terrica, again, telling her what's going to end up happening. You don't know what you're doing. What's going to end up happening, you're going to find yourself somewhere bent over with your panties down to your damn ankles and some little boy going to run on up behind you and then you're going to find yourself pregnant. And she said, well, you know what? Again, with that mouth, even if I did get pregnant, at least I won't give it away like you gave me away. I said, oh, ding, 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 ding. Yes, Miss Terrica, because she got that smart mouth, because that's really her mother. Mercedes is her mother. The foster mother is the father's sister. The father has been murdered at some point, and the, the sister had promised the brother she would take care of her. So she's raising her, the daughter, and the foster mother ended up coming in. They have this whole conversation. Mercedes you know, she tells Mercedes, you know, 
I don't think none of this is working out, this whole thing, dancing. She's paying attention to her body, and she's just getting out of hand, and she's like about pulling her away from the dancing. But she's like, you know, this is the only time I ever get to see her, you know, this, that thing, or spend time with her. She's like, yeah, well, it just ain't working out. I was like, oh, this is sad. So we're going to see some more about that, I'm sure. I was like, oh, my God, this is crazy. So here goes the thing. Autumn gets back down there. She got tea now. She got all the tea for Uncle Clifford. She tells Uncle Clifford about the, the development for the casino and all of this. Uncle Clifford's like, okay, I need you to do one more thing for me, bitch, and I'm going to give you back this ID. So she does it, and she gets her ID. She goes on, and we see her the next day. She got her ID, and she goes, and she's getting her money. So that's the, that's the end for the, of the episode for Autumn. She's getting her money, and that's that. But I got something more interesting for y'all that we talked about earlier on. So the last thing that she had him had uh, to do for Uncle Clifford the night before was she did this whole setup now. We had seen her. She had on these, you know, these little boots and this little cat suit and all this looking real cute and blonde wig. So she made this phone call to Andre. Okay, now, you know, come on down to the club. Come to the VIP room. This, that thing, and the other. I'm going to take care of you because, you know, he, he still be ready to, to bang her out. Because, you know, it's like everything's cool. He gets there. And everything's set up. They got all this ambiance. They got Miss Mississippi laying on the thing. I said, she giving corpse teas, honey. She laying there with roses on her, honey, and all this. He go back into the room. He sees this blonde wig. And it's from the back. You see the long wig. And you see the boots. I didn't, you know, I was in love with the boots. I was like, oh, yes, yes, yes. Got some up there, honey. Same boots. But anyway, so you see this leg lift, baby, with the boot. And then the blonde wig spin around. Baby, it's Uncle Clifford. I said, oh, Uncle Clifford, bitch. Gets over there, honey, and turns around and gets to talking to Andre and tells him, oh, you's a thirsty nigga. You know, this, that thing, and the other baby, and lays him out, founds out. No, it ain't even all about the, the casino being across the street from P-Valley. Built on top of P-Valley. P-Valley be wiped out. She ain't in the plan. She's like, uh-uh, this ain't happening. It's going to be shut down. Now, you got secrets, and now I got secrets. Because, again, remember, the thumpers, honey, ain't trying to hear it. So, now, there's a, a, this clash, this issue. Last thing we see, honey, Andre's leaving. He's so angry. And he's in the, on this phone call. Here go the rapping. God, daddy. This, that thing, and the other, on and on and on. We got a problem. Other end of the phone. The mayor. The mayor is Andre's godfather. Baby, listen, y'all better. This P, P Valley, baby, this is some good stuff. Whole lot, whole lot of moving parts. If I forgot something or missed something, y'all put it in the comments. We'll talk about it. I know my review's a little late this week, but listen, I wasn't going to go without doing it at all. Like I said, I've been talking for 30 minutes. The show is off the chain. Off the chain. And that Uncle Clipper is too many things, honey. But she was wearing her little blonde wig and her cat suit. I said, come on through with this cat suit, bitch. And that boot. I was like, come on, sis. Anyway, genderfuck, I told y'all. Anyway, I will see you all Sunday for the next episode, y'all. This is it, honey. Higher ground. All right, later.